everyone, I am Olive Blade and welcome to my Wonderland. Today we have another figure review. What? And it is one of my favourite characters, Urza Scarlet. The figure itself is Fairy Tales Urza Scarlet Swimsuit Gravier Style 1 6 Scale by Orca Toys, which I purchased from Ami Ami. Now then, let's begin and open this beauty up. I have no idea why I brought out my knife. Like, it kind of helped me pull out that little tag that was holding the lid down. But I should know from previous experience with Orca Toys that they don't have tape covering the sides too often. And, well, none of my figures have. And the majority of the figures I have from Orca Toys are, of course, as a Scarlet. Look at the instructions there. Let's pull her out. Don't worry, Urza will soon release you from the plastic chains. Not that she looks concerned or anything. <laughs> Definitely an uh, interesting bubble design. It's like, it looks like three layers. Well, from the side and the anyway. And the base on the back. Now let's try to get up those tape sides. I swear on this box it looked almost invisible, so I just cut all the way around to try to feel if there was any tape released. Oh, look at that. It's so interesting how the sword has its own little cute section. And I actually appreciate that. Wow. This packaging, I swear, is A plus quality. Look at that detail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the sword. It feels like a letter opener. Or not that I've had one, but I've seen them. And her little hand. I love the pink nail polish. Super pretty, that tone of pink. And interesting how they have that separated. I know you have to attach the sword, but I'm not sure the benefit of having it separated. And the only reason why I see why it has a bracelet is to hide the seam that you need to attach it with. But, anyway, let's get all the pieces out. And I'll bring her out of the plastic. Oh, wow. She's already looking so beautiful. You need to see the colour. I started pulling on the plastic on that side of the hair and as you can see I decided to pull out other pieces first because it wasn't coming and I didn't want to stretch the hair piece or break it or anything. Not that it felt fragile but still. There we go. I finally figured out how I was going to take this off. Go gracefully. Didn't bend anything. And then release the hair. Oh wow details okay i'm awkward just touching her breast there but it was like a little bit of dust and even blew a little bit on it um and i'm not sure if you can see but as you on her fabric bikini there's a little bit of a mark but i will get to that later now then looking at these instructions i actually had to take them out of the plastic have a look at the best way to attach it because looking at it I needed to stretch the arms a little bit it recommended using a hairdryer and I didn't do that but I wanted to see if I could do it first but more nerve-wracking part is actually putting the sword grip into the hand because I was like this is so gonna paint transfer and you know what it did paint transfer and I'm like oh, how could I prevent that mmm but I don't know how I could have prevented that. I did it as carefully as I could. Yeah, I'm just going to have to wipe it off. I used a cotton bud tip with a little bit of water and Jif, which is like a creme cleaner, which can strip the paint. But if you're careful, you'd be able to get the top layer off before you start damaging the bottom one, if you're confident. Otherwise, I wouldn't recommend it. Then I used the other side of the cotton bud has just plain water on it just to wash off the chemical and it cleaned up quite nicely. It was a quick close inspection. I just wanted to show a shot of this paint like dust that was on the bikini bottoms and they were also on her hair too near her hairband and I thought maybe this was a paint defect and I was a little upset when recording this. How can there be that much of a paint floor? But she was sitting on my desk one day and I just thought I'll just have a closer look see 
I tried wiping it off because I was too scared to at first and it actually came off a bit like dust. It needed a little bit of pressure. So then I got a little bit, got a cloth, dry cloth and tried to get it off and then a little bit of a damp cloth and it cleaned off perfectly and I was so relieved as you can imagine. Moving on, let's have a look at her close in inspection. I love the eye decals. They are absolutely stunning. Now the last bit is trying to attach the arm piece to the wrist. Well, actually, it's the wrist to the wrist part. <laughs> now the tricky thing I found, which if you buy this figure, you might have wanted to try using a hairdryer, it was attaching the sword. And I thought if I put enough pressure on it, which didn't require much, I could try to get it in. I had probably more trouble getting the little joint into the finger then actually distancing it the right distance but once I got it there it was pretty strong join and I thought it was very well done of course you can see a little bit of the side but I was managed to put it pushed it in a bit further later on and oh she's together now to put her on the base and yes another basic base I am a little surprised actually that Orca Toys has such a simple base for the Ursa design because the majority of their other Ursa figures have actually really creative base or are detailed. Even the Neko one where she has like a marble base that she's sitting on. That just it just really adds to the figure. Now to interrupt my base rant, I found another spot which is actually a little paint effect. It was annoying me, this little dot on her ankle. But I managed to clean it off the same way I did the paint transfer from the wrist. Now, then, having a closer inspection. I can see a little bit of a seam coming down her arm, I think, from the mould and then that. And then also there was one on the back of her left leg. And then you've got a little bit on her fingers there, which... Honestly, they don't annoy me that much. And the ones on her skin are actually well blended in. I've seen some other people with Ursa figures, the same Ursa figure, and their seams seem to stick out a bit more, so I felt like I was a bit lucky with my version. I'm going to give you a little twirl. Oh, the hair detail. Now, you know how much I love hair, and, and if you don't, oh, and that's the mark I talked about earlier, but getting back to the hair, I love the hair sculpt for this. It looks like it's blowing in the wind. Also, the colour details on it as well. The simple but crisp design of the bikini, and I love how it's tied around the knot, is so cleanly sculpted. I love it. Not to mention the detailed dagger on her thigh. Wow, I just... If it's one thing that Orca Toys can get right, it's that their leather detail, cloth detail, just looks incredible. I just love it. Now then, my review. Sculpting. The body has been sculpted very well. I initially was not sure about the sticking out hip bones in the prototype imagery. However, in person, they look proportional to her body shape. I am very impressed with the mold, but if I'm being a little picky, like I mentioned earlier, I can still see faint seam lines. The most prominent being the one that goes down her back left leg. However, it is really hard to see and I think they did a beautiful job on my figure. Urza's face from the front looks perfect, but she lacks volume from her face which can be clearly visible from side angles. I think defining her eye sockets more in the depth, adding more curve and volume to her face, just a little bit probably would have improved it. Nevertheless, her hair and the sword are just gorgeous. Not to mention the details of her side dagger and mm, curvaceous curves. So I still really love this figure. 9 out of 10. Painting. After the shock of removing the dust-like paint off her head and bikini, the paintwork on my figure is just stunning. The darker shading on the hair, sword and dagger pouch are really well done and brings out the depth of those lovely details. The body's colouring and blush complements the curvaceous sculpt beautifully, which gives it a flesh-like lifeness. I also have to mention how much I love the eye decals and fairy tale tattoo on her arm. 10 out of 10. Posing. 
The pose is what sold me on this figure, honestly. The strong stance holding up her sword with her hair blowing in the wind. I just love it. 10 out of 10. Face. I did not initially like the white base, but as I had in my collection, I actually think it suits the figure very well. It is, however, a very simple design, and compared to my other Orca Toy Urza figures I own, which all have more detail bases, I was a little disappointed that they couldn't do the same for her. Perhaps they could have had like a beach sand detail texture, or even what I think would be a really cool idea is her standing in water. But alas, it was not meant to be. 6 out of 10. Box. Even though it does not have a window for viewing, the box is still detailed with many accurate pictures of the figure. They include many angled shots, which is good, and the box's hard cardboard shell and plastic bubble protects the figure very well. I feel like this package could survive being thrown over a house or something. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Enjoyment. Overall, I really do love this figure, even with her non-volume face. And basic base. And I can't wait to add it to my Urza shrine once I can get a big enough space to fit her in with the rest of them. <laughs> 10 out of 10. I just have to share this quickly. When I was unboxing the figure, my mum, <laughs> she said she is three quarters boobies and one percent the rest of the figure. <laughs> oh, my mum comes up with some of the best birds. Another thing she said is that the figure company spent so much time and money on sculpting her breasts that they didn't have enough to sculpt the rest of her clothing, hence why she doesn't have much. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And until next time, stay safe and I'll catch you later. Bye.